Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. I've come out nice and local this morning and the conditions are nice and grey and it's perfect for long exposure photography. So I do quite a lot of long exposure photography I think. Uh, having lived by the sea all my life, I do do quite a lot of it. And I do get asked a lot of questions about how I do it and how I go about doing my long exposure. So I thought I would talk you through what I do this morning with regards to this image uh, and this composition that I've come across this morning. So yeah, out nice and local, I was walking here the other day and uh, spotted this composition and it kind of works, I'm quite happy with it. These conditions are perfect for this shot, really. I don't think it would work uh, with a big bright sunrise, but it might if the sun was further around to the south, uh, maybe in the winter months. So it might be something I can come back and do another time. So first things first, I always set up the composition. I have got my camera in the position I want it now, but first thing I will always do is take the camera off the tripod, or take it out of this bag rather, and actually stick the camera up to my eye and eye up the composition and try and get the camera in exactly where I want it to be and then position my tripod in around about that same sort of position. This enables you to just get behind the camera and see exactly what the camera is doing. Because our eyes are around about, I think, 35 to 50 mil equivalent of a full frame camera, we can't really see the extreme ends at like 16 mil or 200 mil. So that's where it really, really benefits you to actually get the camera behind your eye and see exactly what we are looking at. So I'm at 16 mil now and this composition looks completely different on the back of my screen than it does to my eye because it's slightly stretched and warped from how wide this lens is. And that can really benefit the composition sometimes. I'll just drop a link just here because I did a video not long ago on the benefits of a 16 to 35 mil lens uh, at Old Howry Rock. So give that one a watch if you haven't watched that one already. So yeah, after the camera is set up on this tripod, um, I will think about exposing this image. So I want to do a really nice long exposure this morning. We have got grey clouds up here. It's quite a grey morning. There's not much light. So the only thing that's really going to work is maybe black and white and super long exposures and smoothing out all this water and really making it look very minimalist and really ethereal and very artistic. Party. I'm doing quite a lot of that recently. So once the composition is set up, I need to think about putting in a hard grad because we've got a nice hard horizon this morning. There's nothing in the way like mountains or hills or cliffs or anything like that. So I know straight away I need a hard grad and I need some sort of ND filter because it's quite light now. I'm going to need it probably a six stop ND because it's not, the sun hasn't quite come up yet, but it is light. So popping in a six stop ND filter is probably gonna get me around about a minute, maybe a bit longer. So first things first though, I will always make sure I've got focus. Before I start messing around, putting grads and NDs in front of the lens, we need to make sure I've got focus. So focus here, anywhere between F8 and F16 is gonna give you sharp focus from right at the foreground here, all the way to the end of the groin. Uh, I will focus somewhere, maybe in the middle of the uh, the rocks here, somewhere on the arch there. That will make sure that focus is pin sharp from front all the way to back. So now I've got my focus, I know that everything's sharp. I've also got the focus assist on there, all lighting up in red, so I know that everything's going to be sharp. I set my aperture around about f11. It may change if I want to stretch out the exposure time a bit longer, I can always stop it up to maybe f13, f16, or if I want to make it shorter, I can always pull it back a little bit more as well, because I said aperture's not really going to make much of a difference here, because we haven't got something in the very far distance. We've only really got foreground interest. So as long as I'm focused somewhere in the middle here, it's going to be sharp really whatever my aperture is. So now that I'm focused, now that my aperture is set, I'll drop my ISO down to about 100 because that will just help with noise reduction and make sure that there is no noise rather. I'm not fussed about the shutter speed at the moment because that is going to change as soon as I put a uh, ND filter in front of the lens. So the next thing I'll do is pop a graduated filter on the sky and uh, like I said that is just going to retrieve data out of the sky. So two stop hard grad and I'll just slide that one in on the front uh, rails on the case system and drop it down to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the horizon and that just allows you to bring out all this detail in this cloud up here so that we can pull it through or at least have the detail and data there so that we can change it around later on because we don't want it to be blown out and we don't want it to be white. So now that my ND filter is in and it is lined up perfectly on the horizon I can have a look at my exposure times by looking at my exposure dial. So currently in these situations right now, at f11 I'm getting two seconds. Now, two seconds is not really long enough to get silky smooth waves. You'll get a little bit of movement, but you won't get that really nice ethereal look. So we're going to need to pop in a filter, an ND filter. 
a 10 stop is gonna leave me standing here for about 20 minutes. <laughs> and I don't really wanna be standing here for 20 minutes exposing an image. Uh, that's a bit of exaggeration, but it's gonna be a long time, I know that. So I'm gonna pop in a six stop ND filter and uh, let's see how much of a difference that makes. So I've just slid down the six stop ND filter uh, in front of my lens. So I've got the six stop ND filter on first and then the two stop hard grad on second. And we've also got a polarizer in there as well. And sliding that filter down is now giving me 60 seconds. So that's much better. As soon as I expose for 60 seconds, all this water is gonna be milky, milky smooth. And it's just gonna look absolutely lovely, really artistic, really minimalist. And it just gives another feel and just, just changes this image straight away. And it just gives you something that you can't really get if you don't have these filters or any sort of ND filters for that matter. So I know focus is sharp. I know composition is set up. As long as I don't knock my tripod or my lens and have to start all over again, it should be absolutely fine. So 60 seconds is set up, F11, ISO 100, filters are in there, touch of polarization on there as well. And now just take the shot. Either set it up on a two second timer, as long as it's not too windy, or grab yourself a shutter cable, stand back and just press the clicker. And that's really it, there's not much more to it. Long exposure photography can be really difficult if you don't go through these processes and set everything up in, in order. If you start to put the ND filter in and then think about focusing and setting up your composition, you're never really going to get tack sharp focus, you're never really gonna get the composition you've set up in your mind, if that makes sense. So you really must get the camera out, set up the composition, take focus, pick your aperture, set your ISO nice and low, and then put a grad filter in, and then the last thing you do is put the ND filter in, because like I said, as soon as you put a black piece of glass in front of the lens, you can't see anything. This shot is exposed for 60 seconds. I will pop this image up on screen for you guys in a minute, and then we're gonna wander down the coast and see if we can get anything else, because this is perfect weather for this style of photography. So walking back along the coast now to see if I can find anything else. Long exposure photography really can be a great way to just change an area and change a scene and really make it look very artistic and kind of make it yours really and put your own spin on it. So I'm going to see if there's anything else I can photograph. It's a nice light at the moment actually so we might even get a little bit of colour. I'm not sure but I quite like the black and white dark moody ethereal images. So let's see if I can find anything else to get the ND filters back out again. Well, I do enjoy it, it's good fun. I really like that image, that first image, and it's nice just to be able to stretch the time out and really make everything look really nice and ethereal and just different, really, than it does to. To, to normal people really because we, we see things slightly differently when we have you know, we have filters and we can slow everything down so I found you see these like groin things here and there's one out there that's a long way away it's in the middle of the sea just stood there by itself and this is really really arty farty but I'm gonna give it a go I'm feeling arty farty so long lens on 70 to 200 image stabilization off because we don't want the camera trying to hunt for stabilization if there isn't any because it's on the tripod. And I'm going to try and do a super long exposure of this groin out there in the middle of the sea. It might be a fail, it might be a complete blunt, but I like the idea of it so I'm going to try and shoot it. So 70 to 200 on, I'm just going to frame it up and I'll talk to you in a second. Okay, so composition is set up. Um, this groin is a long, long way away. Uh, 7200 on at 200 mil. And this is where a super solid tripod really, really uh, comes into its own because there is a little bit of wind. It's, it's not much, but there is a little bit of wind. But when you're in at an extreme focal length like this, any movement in the slightest, like the slightest bit of movement is exaggerated by a million times. So at 200 mil, if I even breathe on the camera, it's gonna wobble and you're gonna see it and it will just ruin the image. 
Uh, I've set this image up. It, it's it's, it's going to be quite hard one to get absolutely tack sharp. But I'm going to give it a go anyway. Uh, I trust this tripod to be solid. So 200mm, 10 stop ND filter, f11, 60 seconds at ISO 50 with a touch of polarization. So I'm going to change it from a 2 second timer to a 10 second timer. Or I could just put the shutter cable in, but I'm going to change it to a 10 second timer so that when I click it, it has 10 seconds until um, it takes a shot. So I can get away, make sure the camera is completely dead still, and then it can go about taking its shot in its own time after the 10 seconds, and then hopefully everything will be dead still. It's a really simplistic image. I'm not sure if I like it. I think I like it. I think it'll work in black and white, maybe super white and super black. Really, you know, arty. But we'll see. I'm going to take it anyway. I'm in that sort of mood, so I'm going to take a shot anyway. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. It's been nice to just get out and do some super long exposures and just take your time. It's about an hour and a half now actually after sunrise. Usually I'd be at home by now with breakfast and a cup of coffee in hand. Um, but it's just been so pleasant and really nice and calm and just really good for your morale and it just makes you feel good. Just being out again, um, just no one around, just you, the camera, a couple of filters and just a nice place and you can just spend hours and hours doing what you love. So there's a few tips and tricks there on how I go about doing long exposure photography. I hope you guys have picked up on a few things or two. I'm just taking one last shot here and then I'm just about to head home. So thank you ever so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do consider clicking subscribe below. Give us a like, tell us what you think down in the comments and I'll see you guys.